Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News Security Summit. Tax pros can help clients battle identity theft risk. The Security Summit battling bad guys just like the Justice League. Yeah, or at least they're giving advice to tax pros on how to battle the bad guys. Honestly, tax pros have to be like Batman these days. You know that movie, The Accountant, where the accountant was basically Batman? These days, that's like a true story. But first, an attempt at a joke. Last month, my boss informed me that you need to be more of a team player. It's like, I just need to be like a team player. And I was like, okay, boss. What position do you want me to play this time? You're the coach. And my boss said, well, this time we need you to play the all important position of team scapegoat. You're blaming any problems on a scapegoat or sacrificial lamb. And I was like, ah, but I always have to play that position coach. Uh huh. And if I can obtain for you these animals. And they're like, yeah, well, you should be proud that you're so good at it. I'm sorry, Apu, I have no choice. So I said, okay. As long as it's for the good of the team, boss. For the team, Marshall, for the team. <laughs> At the next regional meeting, the CEO said, Revenue is down in your department. What do you have to say for yourselves? What do you have to say for yourself? The entire team stood up in unison, pointed at me, proclaiming, It's his fault! It's his fault! It's tough being a team player these days. I tell you what. Tough team. It's not easy. IR 2022-151, August 16, 2022, Washington. The Security Summit Partners today concluded a special summer education campaign by outlining steps tax professionals can take to help clients from becoming statistics in identity theft-related tax fraud scams. So in other words, they're trying to help us out to avoid being the victims of tax fraud scams as tax professionals. The IRS state tax agencies and the tax industry working together as the Security Summit. There's a link to the Security Summit here. Have been combating identity theft since 2015. <laughs> Seems like I'm not sure they've been the most effective. But I think some of the changes in identity theft, possibly increases in identity theft, possibly more targets of identity theft to tax professionals are clearly outside the security summit's control. Part of that might have to do with the environment that we are in and the responses to things like the pandemic, which would has increased the, the potential gain for things like fraud for lower income individuals in particular, making lower income individuals, as well as tax professionals who have multiple, uh, this kind of identity information, more valuable to tax scammers. So that's just kind of part of the environment that we are in that we got to deal with. So this is the final part of a five part summer series sponsored by the Summit Partners to highlight critical steps tax professionals can take to protect client data. The quote, protect your clients, protect yourself, end quote campaign is an effort to urge tax professionals to secure their computer system and protect client data following the pandemic and its aftermath. So basically, they're, they don't know what to do on the government side of things. So they're training us all to be like Batman. And so we're all, we all have to be, you know, Batman now. So quote, identity thieves always seem to find a hook to lure victims and we increasingly see tax professionals as a target given sensitive client data they handle, end quote, said IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddick. It's kind of funny how we just kind of say, well, due to the fact that tax professionals have sensitive information, they have more and more been a hook. Well, that something more than that has to have changed because the we have already, you know, the tax professionals have always had sensitive information and some of the things that might have changed is the environment in terms of the laws, which has make it more advantageous for scammers to scam, particularly lower income individuals due to the changes in things like the tax code and the stimulus payments and basically the, uh, you know, other changes with refundable credits. And that's just, again, part, part of the changes that are happening that, that are obviously going to lead to scams to, towards 
these types of things. So, quote, uh, tax professionals have their hands full taking care of their clients and staying on top of the latest in professional developments, but they shouldn't overlook the basics of protecting their data and their systems. Missing these basic steps can be devastating to a tax pro and their clients, but a few common sense steps and being aware of security basics can go a long way to provide important protection." End quote. While many, be, many may be working from home, either full or part-time, the IRS and Security Summit partners urge the use of virtual private networks or VPNs to securely conduct business. So the VPNs are, are you know, obviously during this time frame, a lot of people kind of decentralized even smaller offices instead of working more in say a centralized location. As you do that, you have more nodes of entry from a computer standpoint where people can basically hack in or get into the system. And one way to, to safeguard that as you have more of a decentralized network is to use these VPNs. So that's something to, to be aware of. So online business commerce and banking should only be done while using a secure browser connection, never at a coffee shop, restaurant, or other business offering free Wi-Fi. So hopefully at this point, everybody should know that, you know, if you're, you're getting free Wi-Fi, that is not a place that you want to be you, you want to be accessing anything that's sensitive financial information for clients for example or for banking information that kind of stuff one way users can tell if they're using a secure browser is by looking for a small lock visible in the lower right corner or upper left of the web browser window some additional considerations be cautious of email attachments and web links do not open a link or attachment that arrives unexpectedly uh, always call the sender to confirm receipt and val validity of any unexpected links or attachments before opening. Now, unfortunately, again, the tax professionals, usually when we see these phishing scams, we typically think of a phishing cam scam kind of as an unsophisticated scam because you look at some of those emails and they're clearly spam. But obviously they're using, most of the time they're using this broad based approach to shotgun pretty like sh not good looking emails because Part of their scam might be to try to convince people to pay them with like a with like a gift card or something right so actually having a, a not so professional looking email is a way to filter out people that would not go all the way through with the scam of actually giving them money with like a gift card or something like that uh, but if because of the changes in the law they might find that it's worthwhile cost benefit analysis to target tax professionals because that information that they can get from there might be more valuable these days. And instead of shotgunning these kind of, uh, these, these very transparently spammy emails, they might try to make a more targeted effort and make the emails look like a client email, for example, and use multiple emails in a targeted fashion. And so and that's what we're looking at more possibly these days. So use separate personal and business computers, mobile devices, and email accounts. This is particularly important for those who may share hardware with other family members, especially children who may not be aware of safety protocols. So obviously other people on the network can, can give access to your network and now your network's compromised. So you'd like to keep your personal network separate from the business network as much as possible. Do not send sensitive business information to personal email devices. Do not conduct business, including online business, banking, or personal computer or device. Likewise, do not engage in web surfing, gaming, or video downloading on business computers or devices. Do not share USB drives or external hard drives between personal and business computers or devices. Again, this is something that's quite convenient to be able to do. As, a, as an instructor, I used to you know, want to take data from one place to the other. But obviously, you know, the hard drives, are, you know, can get infected. People can put a, put a, some something on the hard drive and mess up your whole computer or try to hold it hostage or do whatever they do. So never connect an unknown, untrusted piece of hardware into the system or network. Also, do not insert any unknown CD, DVD, or USB drive. Disable the auto run uh, feature for USB ports and optical drives on business computers to help prevent malicious programs from being mis in, mis uh, installed. So one way they can install these malicious programs is to try to get them on these thumb drives and then try to get some way that you put the, that you'll access the thumb drive again. And you would think that wouldn't be the easiest thing to do, but they can get quite creative and causing an emergency to help someone out or something and you need to 
check out something on the thumb drive and whatever. So be careful with downloads. Do not download software from an unknown web page. Always exercise caution when freeware or shareware. So use strong passwords. Never give out usernames or passwords to others. Strong passwords consist of random sequences of letters to include upper and lowercase numbers and special characters. So you want to have passwords that you can't possibly remember is the bottom line. Ideally, passwords should be at least 12 characters long. For systems or applications that have sensitive information, use multiple forms of identification, multi-factor or dual-factor authentication. So that means you want to get the text message on your phone every time you log into something or something like that. Change default passwords. Many devices come with default administrative passwords. So if you get a default password that you didn't make up, then you want to change that because people might know the default password. Change them immediately and regularly thereafter. Default passwords are e easily found or known by hackers. Change passwords often. Every three months is recommended. Consider using a password management application to, to store passwords. There's like a last pass and other kind of stuff that could be useful. Passwords uh, to devices and applications that contain business information should not be reused. So you don't want to use the same password every time. Additional resources. So you can find additional resources at this exciting stuff. So you can be what you need to be as a tax professional. And that's like Batman. So in addition, receive an IRS publication. We got 4557 safeguarding taxpayer data. There's a link to that here. Tax professionals can also get help with security recommendations by reviewing small business information security, the fundamentals. There's a link to that here by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. You got the IRS identity theft central pages. There's a link to that for tax pros. Individuals and businesses have important details as well. You got publication 5293 data security resource guide for tax professionals providing a compilation of data theft information available on irs.gov 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 so all that cool stuff is here and there'll be a link to this in the description